Hi guys, welcome to Exam Debug. Chris McKenna here. Um, and we're going to be continuing our Python 3 stuff, but we're really going to be changing gears on this one. So this is um, this one's going to be theory. Um, and the next uh, video, uh, we'll go into the practical, how to implement it. Um, so if you're okay with uh, object-oriented programming, uh, then you probably want to skip on, but otherwise you may wish to stick around. So let's have a look. Okay, so um, object-oriented programming, and this is going to be our intro too. So first of all, maybe we have to think about what type of programming we've been doing already. Um, and that's called procedural programming, pretty much. Um, and it's following a sequence of steps. So a um, nice way to think about it, or at least one way that I found helpful, is to think of it as a play. Now, in a play, everybody has a script, and everything will be done step by step following a sequence. Um, and we'll get a nice result at the end of it. It's very suitable for what we're trying to do. There's nothing wrong with procedural programming per se. It's just um, a different way of, of doing things. Um, but that's, that's kind of the way we've been doing it already. Um, but it does mean everything has to be concrete. It doesn't make our programs particularly flexible or things like this. So the paradigm that we use um, more commonly now is object-oriented programming. Now, again, going back to our play situation, imagine instead of having a sc one script that everyone follows, um, what if we told each member of the cast how they would react in different situations? Yeah, we let them be independent characters, and we said to them, okay, if this person does this, then you will react in this way. Um, if someone asks you this, then you will react in another way. So we don't tell them, they, they have no idea what's going to happen in the rest of the play. They just know how they will react in different situations. Kind of like a improvisational theatre. And that's more, more, uh, that's more what object-oriented programming is about. We create objects, we give our cast instructions on what to do in given situations. We give them information about themselves and then we let those objects interact with each other rather than um, having them follow a set script. So here's, here's the, some of the key points here. Um, it uses real world values. So the real world does not follow a script. Um, people do not follow a script. So objects help us uh, much better to model real-world situations than a procedural language could. Um, they're more flexible in many ways. If everyone's working independently, we can move those objects around and put them in different situations, and we know to some extent how they will react in those situations. So we can just move the building blocks around much more easily than we could with a procedural program. Uh, and because of that, we get a lot better code reuse. We can take one object and put it here, and then we can take that same object and put it somewhere else, even in a different um, program entirely. And we know how it's going to react because it's been told to react in certain ways in different situations. So we can just take out chunks of code and piece things together. Um, you've already seen this a little bit with uh, modules um, in Python. So it's, it's kind of that idea of we can take these blocks and we can plug them into different places. Okay, so, um, and don't worry if you don't get this right away, this is quite a tricky idea, um, and, but we'll just cover the basics. Once you get into it a bit more, it might become a bit more clear. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the vocabulary we're going to be using. So, classes. Classes are like our, our code. It's like our definition of a single character. So each character would be a class to some extent. So in this case, we're doing a t-shirt class in this situation. Um, and the information about the t-shirt would be stored in what class? Now, there would be different things like the color, the size, the brand, and the things that it can do, put on, take off, and wash. 
So rather than sort of making a script that pretends to do that, we would give that information to the single object, the class. Um, hopefully it'll clear up as we go along. So attributes. So we just said we have these things for a single class, but you'll notice that there's a big difference. These ones are information about the, sorry, I should say object rather than item, but uh, these, the attributes are the, if you like, the variables inside of that class. Okay, they're contained inside of the class, and you'll see that once we go into the more practical side. Yep. Um, so, for example, we need to know the color, the size, the brand, and we would have all of these things. Now, the other side of that is the methods. Now, methods are the things, the actions that can be done with the object. So we can put on the t-shirt, we can take it off, we can wash it, we can do other things. But these have to be given to the class beforehand so that it knows what it can do. Okay, so far I hope. All right. Um, again, this is kind of like our actors, you know, uh, you know, say lines or if someone says this, then do this. It's kind of going to be, that's going to be in the method side. Um, methods are really similar to what we did in the last video, which was functions. So when it's outside of a class, it's called a function. And when it's inside of a class, it's called a method. Okay, so there's a small distinction between the two, but they have a similar idea, and in fact, they work uh, coding-wise in almost identical ways. Okay, so um, these are the things we can do. The attributes are the information or the variables about the object. Now, one of the great things about objects is that we can create individual instances of an object. So we know that we have t-shirt, and that's the class. The class is t-shirt. But then, as we've seen, we have different attributes. So what we can do is we can take an instance of it, of a t-shirt, and we can assign different attributes to each of the t-shirt. So we can say, make a t-shirt, I want it to be grey, I want it to be a medium size, and uh, what was my other one? And I want it to be, uh, I don't know brand names, but something a brand t-shirt. We can also, in the same program, say, okay, make me another t-shirt, make me another version of class, make me an instance of class, and this one I want it to be a pink t-shirt um, with uh, small size and blah 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 brand. And we can do the same with a black t shirt. So these would all be different instances of the class. Yeah? Um, they would follow the same rules, they would have the same methods, you'd be able to do the same stuff with it. Um, but obviously the attributes would be would be different. Uh, I can't remember. Ah, the attributes would be different. And we can, and as we change stuff with it, as we do stuff with that instance of the class, we can um, we can keep that separate. We don't have to to work and different things. Now, this is really sort of different from the procedural one. With the procedural one, you would have to have a whole bunch of different variables for uh, each and every single t-shirt that we have. What we have is, is an object here, which is a group of variables that go together. Um, and if you think about that in real life, that makes sense, because a person has many different variables, many different attributes. So if you wanted to represent a person, you'd want to do it as a group of those attributes, rather than having all these attributes um, all over in different places, or trying to group them together, but they're not really together inside of the program. Um, so this is a way of kind of bringing stuff together and representing the real world. Sort of, yeah, or creating a new world to some extent. Uh, let's see, okay, so let's just review that uh, very quickly. Um, oh, this shouldn't say instance. 
Oh well. Um, okay. Uh, we've got classes, and classes are the, the template, if you like, from which we will take different instances of the class. Okay, so the template for all, and then the ones that we then create. So you might have a t-shirt class, and then each individual t-shirt, you might have cars, and then each individual car would be an instance of the car class. Uh, you'd have attributes, like the color, the size, or for a car, perhaps the registration plate, uh, the color, of course, the make, the brand, the factory it was made in, anything you'd like. Attributes that are important for representing it in your program. And finally, of course, we would have methods. The things that we can do with this object, the things this object can do. It can be put on, it can be taken off uh, in a car. That could be, it might be driven, you could drive forwards, drive backwards, turn left, turn right, indicate, turn engine on. These would be the methods of the class. Now, like I said, don't worry if that's, um, if that's a bit of information overload, um, because we will be going in the next class to look at how that works inside of a uh, Python program. But I think it's really important that you have these definitions, and my mistakes, um, have these definitions where, uh, for when we go on to talk about it in the next day. Anyway, hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions or complaints or arguments, um, if I've said something you disagree with, please post below. Uh, like, subscribe, and good luck with your exams.